So aside from conditional logic, one of the key things that we can get out of jumps and comparisons is going to be loops. So let me demonstrate how loops work by giving you an example of trying to loop through an array of numbers. So we'll define an array with four values inside of it. And our goal is to iterate through each of these values. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add together all the values in the list. So I want to get the sum of all the values in the list as a result. In the start, what we need to do is we need to set up our index that we're currently at in our array, as well as we need to keep track of the sum in some way. I'm going to use EAX to keep track of where I am in the array, which will start at 0. And I'm going to use CL to keep track of the sum, which will start at 0. The only reason why I'm using CL is because I know that my numbers are small. So therefore, the sum of the numbers is also going to be small, so I don't need to use a huge um, register for that. I could use ECX just as easily, but I just want to demonstrate that since I know that the numbers are small, I'm OK with just using a smaller register for this purpose. So with those two things defined, we could set up our loop. Now, what is our loop going to do? Well, the first thing it needs to do is retrieve a value from the list. The value that it's going to retrieve, it's going to place in BL. Again, I'm picking BL because my numbers are small. I could just as easily use EBX, for instance, or BX. But BL is the same size as these numbers, so we'll work with that. And then I want to be able to get the list, but I want to be able to get the list at the particular array that we're cur the current index, right? So we want to get it at the current index. So this would get me the first value in the array, right, which would be 1. Now, if I want to get a value at a particular index, what I need to do is I need to add that index to the list. So what will happen is EAX starts at 0. So this will just be the equivalent of getting the value at list, which would be the first value. When EAX increments, we'll increment it to 1, which will get us the next value. It will take the starting point and add 1 to get to the next value. And then we can continue that pattern until we reach the end of the list. So that's the way that we retrieve a value from the list. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add CL and BL. So I'm just going to add what I currently retrieve from the list to the current total, which is stored in CL. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the value of our index EAX by one. Two ways that I could do that. I could add EAX one like this, or I could use the increment instruction, inc EAX. All that's going to do is it's going to increment EAX by one. So this is kind of like a I plus equals one kind of instance here, right? So then what we need to do is we need to determine, did we reach the end of the array of values yet? And the way that we need to do that is by taking a look at the size of the array. In this case, we're just going to say, we know that the size is four. So we're going to say, okay, we're going to check to see if EAX is four. And if it is, we're going to go to the end. Otherwise, we're going to go back up to loop, loop being this label here. And I will define right here. And all it's going to have is the interrupt to end the program. So a few different things that we really should discuss as we're as we're working through this uh, set of values and this sort of problem. So first thing is, since I know that the length of my list is four, I can use this kind of logic. If I didn't know that, one thing that I could do is I could put some sort of null terminator at the end of this list, some sort of predictable value at the end. And then I could just check to see if I hit that predictable null terminator value. So that could be another way that I could handle this. Since I know the length, I'll use it, but that would be another way that we could achieve this sort of result as well. Now, another thing that we need to dis need to consider is the result of this interrupt, right? For this interrupt to actually work, we need EAX and EBX to be set to particular values, right? To make sure that we actually quit the program. So it's just important to note that we would want to set the values for those registers to be able to interrupt the program successfully. And that would be typically we'd move one into EAX and we would move into EBX, the value one as well. Ideally, what we would do before doing that is we would somehow preserve any values that we needed. In this case, our sum of values is in CL. So doing this doesn't actually interfere with anything that we need. So this is OK to do. And this gives us our first real functional x86 program that actually achieves a task. So rather than doing demonstrations like we've been doing so far, this one actually does something. It actually sums up values inside of a list. So this is a nice little improvement towards our ability to program an x86 assembly. Let's take a look at the program and see how it actually runs to better understand exactly how this loop is going to work. 
So let's go into our ASM layout, break it start. So starting off, we set our EAX and CL values to zero. This here is moving in the actual current index of the list. So you'll see that once I complete this, if I take a look at BL as the value one, which is the first value in my list, I then add that into the total. I increment EAX. If we take a look at EAX right now, we're gonna see that as a value of one, right over from zero to one. And we compare that to four. And since it's not equal to that, it's not gonna to go to the end of the program. It said it's going to go up to loop. Once again, we load a value into the register BL. You can see now it has the value two. It got the next value in the list. So you can see that our logic is working the way that we would expect it. We add that value, we increment EAX, we do our comparisons, we go back to the loop. Once again, we could take a look at BL to see what it ends up being. And in this case, it's three. And again, we'll just kind of take this straight to the end until we reach the value of four, right? So right here, we have the value of four. And I can also show you, okay, so at the end of this, CL is equal to 10. That's the sum of the numbers from one to four. Everything is looking good. If we take a look at the register EAX, it's equal to four. When it does this comparison, that would be equal, which takes us to the end of the program. At the end of the program, we could see that in CL, we have the result, the sum of all the numbers in the list. And at that point, we interrupt the process exit with a code of one and everything is good and happy. So as you can see, this did work the way that we expected it. So we can actually sum up all the values inside of this list. And that gives you a really simple example of how we can apply things like conditional jumps to be able to do things like looping through an array or a list of numbers. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.